In this session, we are going to focus on what are the key considerations when you are designing a research questionnaire for your study. The first and foremost is, is it a reliable and valid scale? For example, you've searched the internet and you found a particular scale, maybe on Google. But that particular scale was devised by someone in their blog, maybe, or their, their own educational website. Well, that may not be a reliable and valid skill if it is not tested properly and not published in a good research journal. What I prefer is to have a reliable and valid skill that is published in good peer-reviewed international journal, a journal that is indexed by master journalist. Number of items. Now, for example, we've got different scales. Let's say we've got a scale to measure job satisfaction. Now, in case you are measuring job satisfaction, let's say job satisfaction. So how many items should you include to measure this particular construct? Normally, what I prefer is four to six, because what we are doing is we are using structural equation modeling to analyze our data. And one issue with structural equation modeling is that a number of times your items are deleted. And when they are deleted, you are left with three to four items or maybe five items. So there is a chance that your items are getting deleted. And when the items are getting deleted, your number of items is getting reduced. So if it is getting reduced, then you may have or you may face issues in analysis. So why not prepare for it well in advance and keep your number of items to four and six. Moving on. Lower or higher order. Now, for instance, if I'm interested in measuring organizational commitment, shall I take it at lower level or shall I take it at higher level? Now, when I say higher level, this means that this particular construct here will have sub dimensions. And in this case, it could be continuous commitment, normative commitment or effective commitment or at lower level. I've got four to six items measuring this particular construct. Now there are different preferences by different scholars. I prefer lower order constructs unless or until my gaps revolve around higher order or I'm trying to make a more complex model for my study. If you've got a complex model, let's say six to seven variables that are being assessed for their interrelationship. Now, in that case, taking higher order construct would mean that you've got, let's say, 50 plus items, maybe. So if you've got 50 plus items, and then it may be the problem is with getting or generating enough responses. However, this is purely subjective and depends on a lot of other things as well. How complex is your model? The model complexity. How many variables you've got, the number of variables. And maybe you do not have any lower order constructs and it is only measured on higher order. For example, primarily you will see CSR as being one of such scales that has got sub dimensions. Moving on. Match the conceptualization. Now, again, this is very important. One of the common mistakes, one of the common mistakes that students make is that they do not conceptualize. There is no conceptualization of the concepts that they are using in your study. What they do is they say, okay, this is my variable X influencing variable Y influencing variable Z. And this is my questionnaire. Now, before you go on and jump onto selection of the questionnaire, you have to define your variables. How do you define X? How do you define Y? How do you define Z? Now this will set the conceptual scope for these variables and will tell you whether or not this particular variable is applicable in the study setting or not. So first search for definitions of the concepts that you are trying to study in your, in, in your research. And once you do that, then when you are searching for the questionnaire, make sure the questionnaire, the items in the questionnaire match the conceptualization. For example, my conceptualization, let's say if I'm studying CSR is about, let's say, 
discretionary behavior ethics and that's about it where my, my questions are about economic dimension and legal dimensions so the questionnaire is not matching the conceptualization the same is the case with let's say i'm trying to measure organizational commitment and my definition talks about effective commitment how emotional is the attachment of the employee with the organization whereby my questionnaire is about continuance commitment or normative commitment so my questions or my items or that is how i measure the construct do not match my conceptualization moving on wording this is very important a number of times i've seen that students have collected data on let's say they have question questions like this do you like your organization do you love your organization do you want to switch from your organization do not mind my language i'm sorry so when you say do 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 or are you looking for a new job now this is in the form of questions so the response scale should preferably be so the response scale should be yes or no yes or no yes or no but when you've got a response scale such as this this is not a metric scale so you are not use you are not able to use a cm or regression so the wording should be proper and your response scale should be proper your wording should be let's say do you like your organization it should have been like this i like my organization and the scale should have been like let's say strongly disagree disagree neutral agree strongly agree now this is a response scale five point like a scale and this is my statement now this is a metric scale and when we've got multiple items obviously the number of items in a particular concept that we are trying to measure let's say oc then we can use them as latent unobserved variable that is measured using a number of different items so please be considerate about it as well the response scale has already been discussed overlap between construct now this is one of the issue that you will face during your research and if you're doing research in social sciences and that is overlapping what do you mean by overlapping let's say i've got two concepts in my study now one is let's say customer loyalty and the other is word of mouth now word of mouth has got five items five statements one two three four five loyalty has got five statements now it may so happen that one of these statements may sound similar to one of these because the two concepts more or less may overlap with each other although conceptually they are different but sometimes one of the statements that actually help measure these constructs may overlap now the solution for this is that be very considerate about the statements that you use make sure when you are developing a model you are trying to find out or you are trying to assess relationship between constructs that are actually different from each other otherwise you will have issue of discriminant validity later so when you are conceptualizing your constructs in the study be mindful how you conceptualize and when you operationalize that is you you are trying to find out the measures make sure they are different from each other and when you are developing your model make sure you are not having constructs that are too similar to each other moving on go to the original source for the measures now sometimes what happens is i get a paper i'm looking for the questionnaire for customer loyalty i get a paper and they have used customer loyalty and they have given their questionnaire in let's say appendix or in the text in the table now what they did was they actually adopted or adapted the scale from some other source 
And what I do is I just copy it from this paper here, whereby they did not develop the questionnaire. In this case, please go to the original sources. Do not just take it from a paper. See the methodology of the paper. Did they develop the scale? No, they didn't. They took it from, let's say, X, Y, Z in 2021. So go to this X, Y, Z and see their items, their number of items, their response scale. How did they conceptualize it? This is very important because what, what happens sometimes is I'm getting a scale from a paper that actually used the scale. They did not take the whole scale. They just took maybe four to five items. Now you may be asked for justification that let's say the original scale had eight items and you took only four or five items. Why? So these are the considerations for designing a questionnaire for a research study. Thank you very much.